Hello, I'm Marie Walton Mann, the founder of Progressing Ballet Technique, or PBT as it's known. And I'm here today with two students, Georgia and young Harriet. And I'd like to talk about some common faults. I've been teaching since 1974, so I'm sure I've seen every fault there is. Today, I'd like to target feet. And the first fault is the common fault of sickle feet. Now, sickle foot takes its name from the uh, harvest uh, sickle that they use to harvest the wheat. And th the shape of it is the sickle in the foot. So I asked Georgia to demonstrate a sickle foot devon, not pretty, and now straight, and a lovely devon. The sickle foot is aesthetically a sickle again, aesthetically not pretty at all, straighten it up, but more important than it not being pretty, it will strain all the ligaments here on the external side, the lateral side will be strained and can lead to sprains, twists, stress fractures. And a la seconde, see it twist and it must be straight. So from the tibia and straighten it up through, must be straight. That is so important and valuable training young. Right? So every time a child sickles their foot, stop them. Have a look at the derriere line now, Georgia, and the twisted line, the sickle, and straighten it. And it's not winged, just straight right through long limbs, long ankles. Thank you, Georgia. So a couple of things that you can do that we cover in the PBT program. So starting with um, Harriet, would you put your leg and foot on the ball in Devon? That's it. So you will see this in the sub-junior program. And they bring the leg in, and then the heel must be away from the ball. And if the heel is down on the ball, can you put it down on the ball? You see this is not straight, and this is dangerous. They keep doing it, it's muscle memory. So then always correct it so the tibia is in line, strong ankle, and then stretch it back out again. That's it. Long ankles all the time and bring it back in and lift the heel. That's it. Thank you. So every workshop that I give around the world, I actually say to the teachers when I'm teaching the Attitude Devon, I always say I'm on a world mission to eradicate the world of sickle feet. And that's my mission. Georgia, can you put your foot on the ball in the Devon? We do this in the Attitude Devon in the workshops. And it is on the online program. So it asks the student first to stretch out long toes and then draw it in and the heel to long toes again. The heel must always be up. Right? Now, if you could sickle it now. And then up. So that sickle foot, if it's dropped down like that, that's beautiful, Georgia, and extend. That's it. Always keeping the heel up and draw it in. If they work like that with a sickle foot constantly, they're going to jump and land, twist their ankle immediately. Right? So it's very valuable to start young and train the alignment of the foot. Because after all, the body's forever. Curling toes is the second fault with the feet that I'd really like to discuss. And it's for this reason I make sure that the students who are training PPT have their tights rolled up and it's barefoot. Because honestly, there's a lot of curling toes in classes under the shoes. And the long toes are so important, long, strong toes. After all, we're training these lovely female dancers to dance on their toes. If they work every day in class curling their toes, they're going to go on point on their knuckles cause serious corns, metatarsal stress, and, and also with the boys as well, when we want them to jump so high, the strong toes give the propulsion from the floor into the air. So it's really, really important, their toes, not to let them curl. So 
I'd like Georgia to show you what the difference is, what it looks like. And it's a good idea for teachers to take their shoes off and have a look what's happening in the shoes. So Georgia, would you go to second first and show the very curled toes first, curled. See the knuckles crunching. So she would be dancing on point on those knuckles there. Now correct it for me, Georgia. Long toes, that's it, really long. And show me again, curled, so to see the difference. Oh, and long, really important. And Devon, what it looks like, curled toes and long toes. All right, yes, yeah, that's it, really energy in all the toes, fantastic. So to get this from the students and develop the strength in their feet, they need to understand the doming technique. Georgia, can you put your foot out into the, that's it, and dome in and see the strength through the toes. So it looks a little bit like a duck's beak and then release and then grab the floor again and dome in. Fantastic, yes, and then release. Really important. Now, Georgia, would you mind laying down on the side? Can I have this ball? Just lay down to do the um, drawing up the leg in second. Yeah? And we'll put the ball on the calf, yes. Perfect, now in this, they can also do the same effect. So we roll through to long toes, draw it up, and suck the ball in like you're doming to long toes. That's it. Beautiful. Beautiful, which really strengthens right through. That's it. Perfect. And then slowly back through and back to a flex. Yeah, after all, without the feet, what have we got to base our work on? And then beautiful. And then grab the fusion ball and draw it in strengthening those toes. Yes, excellent, excellent. Now, Georgia, do one wrong with the curled toes. So go back out and in, crunch. See the difference, right? Then she'd be dancing on her knuckles, dangerous. The other thing that I would really like to stress, and this is right from this age through to professional, that, thank you, Georgia, just relax, that at the yeah. end of every ballet bar, every ballet bar, religiously, there should be a set of rises. Right? So at, at the young age, both legs just rising slowly onto demi point, slowly down, with every teacher watching that all toes are evenly pressed into the flooring and slowly down. And then by this age, one-legged rises, yes, that you practice after every ballet bar should be part of a daily routine in a ballet class. Continuing on, I'd like to talk about the pronation of the feet, which is equally as dangerous as the sickle foot and the curled toes. Got to sometimes look at where the pronation is starting from. So first of all, pronation is the rolling of the ankles. I'll ask Georgia to roll her ankles forward and you can see that this side of the foot is not engaged on the floor at all. Now I would be asking Georgia in class to lift her arches, lift the front of the arches, spread the toes and every part of the foot is even with the arches lifted. Really valuable to ask them to lift their arches. Now sometimes that pronation is from the ankles, so pronate again for me. Sometimes it's just from the ankles. Sometimes it's, lift the arches again. Sometimes it's because they're not holding their turnout. More likely that you've got to look higher for the fault in the pronation. So for me, the center of the pelvis is the starting point, midway point which connects the upper torso, the legs, the feet. So if the pelvis alignment is tucking under, so I'll ask Georgia to turn around to the side now, and maybe put your arm in second. And if you tuck your pelvis seriously underneath, it will make all the lower limb drop forward. Now, lift out of the pelvis 
and see the alignment self-correct. Right? So this is why in PBT we focus a lot on the pelvis alignment in the bridging. It all starts here because it's all interconnected. And the pelvis for me is the most important part of the body to have the correct posture above the pelvis and the alignment through the legs and down to the feet. So if they're pronating, look a little bit further. So I, uh, in the bridging, which we do in every PBT class, we always look at that pelvis alignment. So I'll ask the students in any bridging to go and look and feel from the hip bone to the femur bone as they're lying vertical. Um, I know we don't have a mat here, but we do have a ball. So we'll do the, just the general bridge up and we need to see the hip bone, the femur, all in one straight line through, just a little bit lower. There, there we go, there we are. So if you look at that alignment, they can even touch their hip bone and feel it, feel that alignment down, that's it. So there's various bridges and pop back down, articulate down. So we have the bridges for turnout, the bridges for the développé, cross the legs for the développé, and go back up into the bridge. And then again, we check here. Because if this is not correct, then it will affect their feet. And the feet are precious. So I hope you enjoyed and got something out of this little tutorial on these three faults. And please be careful the students don't sickle their feet, they don't curl their toes, check what's under the ballet shoes, and obviously the pronation, check where their pelvis is. Just remember, the body is forever.